welcome to the channel. My name is Kit and I'm coming to you from my home studio. Today we are talking about the tools that you need to quilt, to become a quilter, to make quilts. If you have never made one and you're concerned about what tools do you need to make a quilt, maybe you only have a few quilts that you want to make, memory quilts or something like that, um, and you don't want to invest or don't have that, you know, don't have a lot of funds to invest, or maybe you don't have a lot of room in your home to have a sewing machine up to do that kind of hobby. Let's start by talking about some of the basic things you need to be a quilter. And in this video, we're going to concentrate on a sewing machine. So a sewing machine is obviously something that you need to create a quilt. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things you need in a sewing machine. So let's start by talking about the definition of piecing a quilt top versus quilting a quilt. So when you start with fabric, you cut it up following a, pa a pattern of some kind that you've chosen and you sew your pieces together. When that's completed, that's a quilt top. That requires a sewing machine with a straight stitch and that's it. So an older sewing machine works just perfectly for piecing quilt tops. Now, if the quilt top that you're piecing includes um, applique, then you need at least two other stitches on your sewing machine to do applique. And I'll show you a little bit of some applique. So this is a quilt that I'm working on. If your quilt top construction includes making anything that's considered applique, then you may want to consider a machine that has a zigzag stitch as well as a blanket stitch. So this is an example of a quilt block that I'm working on. There is a circle that's been turned down on the edges and a five inch block. And I'm going to take this to the sewing machine with um, thread that matches the circle. And I'm going to stitch all the way around that. And that is what you call applique. So for this block, I would like to use either a blanket stitch or a tight little zigzag stitch. If you want to do applique, now you may want a zigzag and a blanket stitch. So those are the only three stitches you need when constructing quilts. So grandma's sewing machine from 1961, mom's sewing machine from 1990, all of those machines will work and do a good job for you. So now let's talk a little bit about quilting the quilt. So you've finished constructing your quilt and let me move this out of the way a little bit. So this is an example of a smaller quilt project that will be a table runner um, when it's done. So for this quilt, I need to, I have chosen a backing fabric. I have chosen batting and I have my quilt top. So I'm going to take these three things and sandwich those together. And I'll do that much straighter and nicer. I'm going to sandwich those together and then I'm going to take this quilt sandwich to my sewing machine and stitch these three layers together in a way that's both decorative and secures them so that if I want to throw this in the wash at some point, the batting will stay together and I won't have any issues with that. So we talked a little bit about piecing the quilt top together. So now let's talk about quilting the quilt that you've created. And that includes a quilt back, the batting that goes with the quilt, and the quilt itself. And layering those three together and using one of several methods to sew these three pieces together, okay? So one of the choices is to send the quilt out to a professional long armor and allow them to stitch the decorative quilting stitching on for you and send it back to you and then and you can put the binding on and your quilt is completed. That is something that I do at pinkartquilting.com. I have a website where I do that for customers that send their quilts to me and I quilt that for them. Another option, especially on a smaller project like this, is to take it to your sewing machine and sew. If you're going to do that on a small project, 
your sewing machine is going to work fine. If your sewing machine happens to have a walking foot with it, and I'll show you one of those. So this is a walking foot. So let's have a little sewing machine lesson, okay? okay? So on a sewing machine, underneath the presser foot are feed dogs. They pull the fabric through under the needle when you're sewing. When you are sewing three layers like that, in order to assure that the sewing machine is pulling all three layers through at the same speed, people will use, or you can use, a walking foot. And what a walking foot does is it creates, it has feed dogs on the top. So the top will be feeding your fabric through at the same rate that the bottom will, and then you won't have any bunching or, or shifting of these three layers when you're stitching. And you can, with this kind of foot, you can stitch straight lines. You can stitch in the ditch of the piecing that you've done. You can um, do a diagonal stitch, a crosshatch stitch, anything that's straight or minimally curvy, you can use a walking foot for to stitch, especially on the smaller projects. Now, I wouldn't recommend that, that um, path if you had say a king size quilt because the second the, another feature that you will look for in a quilt if you're really determined that you're going to do your own quilting for your projects is to look for a machine that has as much space from this edge to the needle as possible because if you notice on this machine there's a bit more space there than there is here because when you're quilting this on the machine there are times when you're going to need to get part of this quilt to go through here to get it onto the needle and that is going to be um, very difficult on a really large project the long arm that i have has 26 inches in there and that's one of the reasons why the long arm is a preferred choice especially on the larger projects the last thing we'll talk about today is if you want to make your quilt top using free motion quilting. So free motion quilting means that you drop the feed dogs so that they go down below the surface of the sewing machine and you change your foot to a foot that's open in the front so that you can see the stitches as you're stitching. And I'll show you one of those. So this is a foot that is open in the front. So that gets put on the machine. Then when you're sewing, you can see your stitches. Now, free motion takes a little more practice because, because those feed dogs are lowered, you are pushing your presser foot, your um, foot pedal, at a particular speed that this, this needle is going up and down at a particular speed. And the, how fast you push this under that needle determines how big or how small those stitches are. And if you want them to be consistent on your quilt, then you want to be consistent about how fast you're pushing your pedal and how fast you're moving your project. So again, that's another um, project. Takes a little practice, but you can do a lot of decorative things on here. Like on this one, I could trace the... I could trace the monkey here. I could trace the bananas. I could, I could use the stitching to stitch flowers or hearts or roses, anything that I wanted um, with the free motion quilting. So I hope what you saw in the video today helped. If you're new to quilting and you're considering buying a sewing machine, knowing what features you need in a sewing machine, we talked about a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, a blanket stitch, possibly a walking foot and even an open toe presser foot if you want to try to do um, free motion quilting on your own. But beyond that, some uh, and maybe uh, a larger space between the edge of the sewing machine and the needle so that you can get projects through the sewing machine as you're quilting. Um, so those are really the, the necessary uh, features that you need in a sewing machine. So when you look for one and at whatever price point you're at, you'll be able to see um, what features you need on the machine. 
my recommendation would be to start with a, even a borrowed machine until you get comfortable with quilting and you're sure that's something that you want to do before you invest in a more expensive machine. So if you found that information to be helpful, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel and watch for future videos where we talk about some of the other things that you would need to make a quilt. I hope that you enjoyed the information. Thank you. Thank you.